Uh, welcome to uh, Intermediate Macroeconomics. Uh, it's the advanced um, course in macroeconomics uh, in, the, uh, the un in the undergraduate program. In this course, we are interested in understanding how economies work at the macroeconomic level, uh, looking at how different markets um, work, how uh, the production of national output happens, and how macroeconomic poli policy policies are conducted, notably to uh, smoothen shocks, to, to respond to shocks to, to the economy, as we have seen recently during the uh, financial and economic crisis. Uh, this uh, instruction will be supported by a set of videos like this one, supplemented by PowerPoint presentations, uh, notes uh, from the book, and the textbook. We will also assign a number of uh, videos that illustrate a number of uh, some of the topics which we will hope the student we would require the students to watch and comment on. Uh, in terms of requirements for the class, um, for grading purposes, there will be weekly assignments uh, drawn from the textbook or from the, the other material. Uh, we will give a midterm exam and a final exam. There will be discussions online. Um, like other courses in macro, uh, this course is organized uh, along the way we, in, in we, we, we normally think about how economies work, how the world evolves. We have phenomena that evolve, that determine the, 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 the behavior of the economy in the, in the short run. We have factors that determine the, the uh, uh, economic outcomes in the medium term and then in the long run. Uh, so uh, we will start with an overview of uh, the U.S. economy and the global economy, how they are now and, uh, and uh, the expected prospects in the, in the medium uh, term. We'll then focus on the short run. In the short run, we look at uh, partial equilibrium of, of, uh, of uh, key markets, the goods markets, the financial market. And here in the short run, we really focus on the demand side how the de how demand determines uh, equilibrium uh, of of the whole e the whole economy before we move to the sh to the medium run where we now bring in the uh, the supply side starting from uh, labor the labor, uh, labor market analysis which allows us to determine employment which then determines uh, aggregate output it's uh, then we'll, that aggregate output will be matched with uh, demand to determine uh, equilibrium um, in the economy. Uh, after that, we'll look at the long run. In the long run, what we are interested in is to see how economies grow over time. And this will allow you to understand why some economies grew faster than others, why some economies have struggled and still struggling to grow, like uh, many uh, countries in, in, um, in the developing world, in Africa, Latin America, and even uh, some in Asia. So in this section, we'll do a detailed analysis of the growth dynamics. We'll also look at uh, some uh, stylized facts uh, of growth uh, uh, over time. And here, um, an interesting exercise uh, in, in macroeconomics is to look at what determines growth in the long run, how much does capital, how much does labor contribute to, to growth. And this is what we, we refer to as uh, growth decomposition in the growth analysis. After that, we'll look at, uh, uh, open up the analysis a little bit to look at the world economy, do uh, inc incorporate trade uh, of goods and services, but also uh, the financial markets in the, in, the, in the open economy, which involves analysis of exchange rates and how exchange rates are determined how they affect uh, trade of goods and services. Uh, we will then look at how um, uh, policy, macroeconomic policy, fiscal policy, monetary policy works uh, in, the, in the open economy settings, having spent the first part of the, of the, of the class looking at, at uh, the closed economy context. Um, we want to finish this uh, class with a more focused analysis of, uh, of policy we especially uh, given that today we have actually seen what policy can do 
to uh, help economies that are facing uh, crisis. This will illustrate with the case of the U.S., but this, the analysis will, can be expanded to the case of other countries. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the case of, of Europe with the, with the debt crisis, but we'll also refer to, to policy interventions in developing countries during the crisis and see how they uh, manage to, to, um, to hedge the effect or to smoothen the effects of, of the crisis. In the, last p in the latter part, we will uh, discuss the, the concerns of policymakers who are interested in stimulating the economic, economic activity so that the economy could grow faster, but are also worried about potential negative impacts on inflation. So if you, if you embark in a heavy stimulus uh, initiative, that, of course, will boost demand but in, the, in, in doing so, if the, if the supply side doesn't respond quickly, you may have to face uh, uh, high inflation. But we'll see what is the evidence really about this, argue, uh, this uh, presumed trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Does it really exist? Uh, or is it a theoretical construct that has, um, and whether it has uh, real evidence? We'll talk about um, a critical uh, concern in policy, which is how do you finance the deficit? Given that m uh, governments in many, in many, in many cases uh, do not have enough revenue to finance the expenditures, and some of the expenditures are basic expenditures that can, uh, what they have that are difficult to cut, how then do then finance the deficit? One option is to just print money, and we call that uh, infl um, uh, inflationary financing of the deficit or seniorage. How sustainable is that? How much money do you, how much revenue do you generate? F can you generate from uh, printing money uh, before you f you you face high and uh, spiraling out of control inflation? Um, the policy making is like a game. Uh, you, f you have the policymaker uh, undertaking policy interventions to generate particular outcomes like reduce inflation, increase growth. Uh, but this is uh, uh, conditioned on the fact that uh, the private actors will continue to re will respond to policy making so that if policy, if say the government uh, promises to cut interest rate or to reduce inflation, the expectation is that then consumers will consume more, investment investors will invest more. Is that how it works? Uh, what happens if the, the, the public does not believe in the, in, in, in the pronouncements by the policymakers, which, which often happens when the policymaker does not have full credibility vis-a-vis -vis the public in terms of following through on policy pronouncements or even being able, being able to implement policies as announced? In that case, we have a serious concern, uh, problem of credibility, and in, in, in which case, uh, actually, policy pronouncements or policy announcements may have no effect, may not generate the desired, the desired effect, because the public is not uh, c uh, confident that the, that the policy maker will actually follow through on policy announcement. So this is the broad view of the, of the course, uh, in terms of the, the sections that we will cover. Uh, and also the, the organization of the course in terms of the, uh, the readings and the requirements and what, the, what, the, what we hope the students to be able to accomplish and gain from this, from this class. Thank you. Welcome back again uh, to Intermediate Macroeconomics. Uh, we now dive into the discussion of the, of the substance of the course. Uh, in this uh, segment, we'll have uh, an overview of the key concepts, but also setting the stage for the discussion. Uh, it, given the, the context of uh, the world,